Hey everybody, so today we are going to be going over what is generative AI in 10 minutes or less. Now, you might be asking yourself, hey, Ashley, there's a lot out there on this topic already. And yes, you would be right. I'm actually gonna put a few resources down below if you wanna learn more about it. I also did a video before ChatGPT came out and that is linked up above and down below if you wanna go check that out and see how people talked about this stuff before it was such a big deal in the, the sphere of everything. <laughs> So go check that out if you are interested. So what we're gonna do today is I am breaking this down into the components to understand how generative AI works specifically with imagery. And I'm going to be comparing this to something that I think is one of the more relatable ways of describing how generative AI works. And that is comparing how that process works to creating a cake. So I'm going to be asking the generative AI to tell me how to bake a cake and you'll see what the prompt is for that specifically. And I asked my sister who is a 3D artist specializing in fancy cakes and jewelry to help me out with this video. So if this sounds interesting to you, make sure you stick around. So if you have recently dived into the wild world of generative AI, either text, voice, or images, you might see something that looks like this. These are very complicated. There's a lot of steps. There's a lot of different moving parts. I am not going to go over all these little moving parts um, because if you want to do that, I'm going to link resources down below for you to do so. What we're going to do in this video is if you just need to know the basics on how does this thing work to get from point A to point B, that's what we're going to be going over. But just know if you want to dive into any of these topics a little bit more, links down below if you want to do that. Step one is the prompt. This is your starting point. You are basically prompting the model or the service you're using on what you're looking for. And you have to be pretty precise in this because it's going to be the foundation of what you're really gonna be asking for at the other end. So the first step is always having a model that is trained and here I'm scrolling very fast through images online. That's not really how the training works, but it, it gets the point across that it's trained on a ton of examples so that it understands a lot of different prompts, not just the one that we're looking at here. And that pre-training is what it's going to reference when it is actually assembling a response. And in conjunction with that, it has to understand what you actually asked. And that's where a lot of things fall short in some of these smaller models is it doesn't really understand enough about your prompt in order to give you a satisfactory response. Here, it's chunking things or vectoring things to understand how things are related to other things so that it can then start to build an understanding. And once it understands the gist, it's going to start to fine tune based on things that it knows people liked, people didn't like, or it's training on positives and negatives. Now we're starting to see the models actually run. And so on my side, you can see I have three different models running. These are all from ChatGPT. And here you're seeing the models start to run. I used three different prompts in ChatGPT at the time of this filming, that was number four. And you can see that it's starting to run and give me the outputs that I'm going to need to be able to create this 3D model. Now. Just like things in the real world, it doesn't make the 3D thing itself. So you still have to do that, even if you're using generative AI. Now we're starting to assemble the response. And this is in reference to the chunks from the prompt, the pre-training and the other reference material that we use for fine tuning. Now you'll notice this is a little different from the original pre-training because the pre-training was training on basically everything. And in the images I was showing, they all looked like space themed things, but really it's gonna be on everything. This is going to be very specific to the prompts. And so that's why you can see that we're looking at different gateways, different universe images. This is really where all of that training, the pre-training, the fine tuning, uh, the reference material, all of that really comes to bear because if you don't have enough of those or you don't have a big enough sampling or maybe you haven't trained your model so that it is rewarded for giving you more interesting things rather than the same thing over and over again, this is really where the um, specialness comes in for each particular model. And you can see where it falls short. Here, we don't actually have a lot of examples of a soup bowl that is going to meet my expectations. So 
if I was using this, and you'll see this in the end response from um, the generative AI I used for this prompt, it doesn't really do much with the soup bowl. Now in my prompt, if I had said Campbell's soup can, um, and I did do that when I was generating the ChatGPT prompts, it would get more specific. But if you didn't specify that, and maybe you from a different culture where there's different soups that are more popular, you know, those are the types of things that you have to really watch out for when you are generating your prompt and what the output is going to be. So you'll see here, we're now looking at the output. The outputs on the screen here are the real outputs, not just things that I grabbed from the web. I put these prompts in the exact same prompt in a number of uh, generative AI tools for images. And I'm going to link all of those down below if you wanna try them out. But again, keep in mind, I can't say any of them are ethical or not. And ethical here, I'll put a lot of links down below if you wanna dive into that. But that is making sure that it was responsibly trained, it was using uh, materials for its pre-training and its fine tuning and its reference materials that um, it was allowed to use that are not copywritten. There's a lot of murky things going on and a lot of laws and regulations that are starting to uh, get discussed on that topic. I'm not gonna cover that here, but I will link some materials down below if you wanna check that out. And the last steps are, did this response actually meet your expectations? And this is one of the more common steps in generative AI right now because your prompts, maybe you're not used to writing them, maybe they weren't specific enough, maybe they were too specific. And if they were too specific, perhaps that's where we get into the second piece here. Maybe the model isn't trained enough or it doesn't have enough reference material or maybe there wasn't enough fine tuning on one of the things that you had in your prompt. So that's the other step that you have to account for here. And if you need to, then you're gonna have to rerun and potentially rerun again and rerun again and rerun again. And that's one of the other issues here is, you know, if you're just playing around, um, that's great. Maybe you're just generating something that you wanna, you know, spark interest and, you know, all of that's fine. But if you are using this for a very specific reason, you might have to do this quite a few times, or you might actually have to go back if you are the one making the models to really, you know, scrap a bunch of things, um, find more training sets, do more fine tuning. It's quite an extensive process if you are making these models yourself and they are quite expensive. So you have to be able to uh, support running these constantly. So that's why a lot of people are not creating their own. They're really creating things you know, based on ChatGPT or some of the other ones that are out there. So the last thing here, and this is maybe unique to this prompt, is I asked for a cake. <laughs> I did not get a cake at the end of my generative AI journey. I have a way to make a cake. I have all the things I need to make a cake. But at the end of the day, I am making a physical thing that I need to be able to eat. So I mentioned in my prompts that, you know, you can make 3D models. Um, there are 3D printers that allow you to make things, you know, out of plastic and metals and a bunch of other things. There are a few out there that allow you to make things out of food, but um, they're not going to make you a cake. Uh, that is something that you will probably, at least at this point, still have to do on your own. And that's, you know, a part of this whole generative AI thing is, it might still be good clay on the table. It's maybe a good starting point to get you going, but it's certainly not going to be the end. Uh, there's there's work that you will have to put into it, even if it is uh, recalibrating something or taking the output of the generative AI and you know sprucing it up or doing something to it that it really makes it your own. And you know if it's not you doing that, you you can work with a cake artist like I did with my sister um, where. I could go back and forth with her on, well, this is kind of what I meant and I can help refine what I what I was giving her and she could give me iterative responses so that we didn't have to make multiple cakes in order to get the right response. That's the other thing that you know generative AI doesn't do right now. You kind of have to wait till the end to see if it's gonna do what you want. So all of this with a grain of salt. So with that, I wanna thank you very much for watching this. I hope it has been interesting and helpful. And with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.